Hey guys, hope you, everybody is doing well. Today's Tuesday, May the 20th, so Celiac Awareness Month, day 20. And I am here in fabulous Chimney Rock, North Carolina. So I actually wanna give you guys a quick little tour around this. So try not to make you too dizzy, but I gotta share the view with you because it's awesome. Look at that. So green, so beautiful. And we tried to find a place where there's not too many cars and stuff. And I think there's somebody pulling in right now. Awesome. So, anyway, uh, all right, so today's topic for Celiac Awareness Month, we are discussing dealing with others, with events, and with people. And I did try to take my sunglasses off, but um, quite honestly, I was squinting so bad that I just put them back on, so I apologize. Um, so, anyway, so how do we deal with others and with events, and how do we deal with the fact that maybe we're the only one that has celiac when we go somewhere? Uh, the first thing is, and I've talked about this a lot, planning ahead of time. So when it comes to some of these different situations where we're talking about, um, awesome, somebody's pulling in like right behind me here. Okay, so some of those different events that you're dealing with might be um, going out to dinner with your friends, maybe some work travel, uh, going out to a potluck or picnics, uh, or going to big social events such as weddings. I'm so excited this car decided to pull in like right behind me. Anyway, all right, so how do you deal with this stuff? And one of the things that I had to deal with early on and had to deal with very frequently was work travel. And when you work for a big corporation, one of the advantages is the fact that with work corporations that a lot of times there are meeting coordinators. And those meeting coordinators are super helpful, but one of the things that I also, oh, there's gnats around here, sorry about that. One of the things that I also learned early on was to not take for granted or um, assume that just because you have told them that you have celiac that they can actually advocate for you and understand what that actually means so what I have found to be very helpful was whenever I would travel for work that I would definitely let them know whenever I feel like the um, the meeting form to let them know if there was food allergies that type of thing but I would also make sure that I was um, working with my boss my boss knew that I had celiac because we would have some um, dinners out with just um, with just the team and so I would make sure to talk to my boss and let them know that I need to figure out exactly who's in charge because I want to be able to follow up and the reason is that I will still never forget one of the big events that we had um, and this was several years into my diagnosis where I became very comfortable with assuming that the people who were in charge of doing the meeting planning actually understood celiac and that when they said that they had um, made sure that I was safe for all the meals that I was and we had a banquet dinner one night and there was absolutely nothing to eat. And I still remember that I went and just, I cried. I went off to the side and my boss was like, what's wrong? I'm like, I can't eat a thing here. And it just sucked because I had let my guard down. I had stopped planning. I stopped bringing emergency food, um, or at least for that case. And I think wherever we were going, it was so far away from where we were actually staying that it was just incredibly inconvenient and just um, a really bad situation. Dear God, this car is determined to get in the shot. Okay, anyway, so when you're going for work meetings, make sure that you work with your boss. And then also I worked with the meeting coordinators. So when I worked with the meeting coordinators, what I did was um, reached out to them and let them know that I had celiac, wanted to know um, which vendors they were working with, if it was with the hotel, could I talk to the people at the hotel restaurant, um, and make sure that they actually understand the precautions to take. Sometimes they're gonna be able to accommodate and sometimes they're not. And when they are not able to accommodate, have your backup plan, bring your food with you. Okay, that's gonna kind of be the theme of this as far as everything that I'm discussing on here. Um, so work travel. Another thing is going out to eat with friends. When you're going out to eat with friends, ask them what type of food they're in the mood for. So that way you're able to, you know, if they say, oh, we're in the mood for Chinese food, great. Go and do the searches that we've talked about. So go to Find Me Gluten Free. Search your town and put in Chinese food, gluten free, um, Chimney Rock, North Carolina, whatever. So make sure that you do the searches ahead of time and that way you're not looking like you're trying to completely direct where you're going. You're also respecting what other people want within your group as well. Um, so work travel, um, potluck and picnics. Um, this is a big deal, especially with the holidays and I'll talk about the holidays in a whole separate post. But when you're going for potluck meals um, and people will probably have really good intentions talk to the person that is in charge of the potluck um, or the picnic, that kind of thing. And I don't care how selfish it seems, you're gonna be miserable if you don't do this. You want to be one of the first people that actually hits the, um, the potluck. And 
and you know those that you know that are safe because you probably have some other friends now with sea light becoming more um, commonly known but there will probably be a couple of dishes that you can say okay I know that whatever I bring I can eat that and then I can eat whatever um, Allison brings because Allison also has to eat gluten-free she prepares that way her kitchen is safe so you know hey Allison what is it that you're bringing the other thing is to consider bringing more than one dish I know it might seem like a pain but that way you know you can eat and definitely go ahead serve yourself first um, I know sometimes manners just have to go out the window for this type of thing um, but manners and health and safety you just have to consider how to keep yourself safe um, finally weddings so I know that I brought this up on another go live and when it comes to weddings um, finding out who their vendor is and you know don't necessarily ask them to change what they're doing but if you can reach out to the vendor and find out then that way you're not causing the bride and groom any extra stress so but I still say go ahead and eat ahead of time bring some food with you and you know if if you're a female then you can throw some stuff in your purse bring an extra purse just deal with it who cares about the fashion statement you want to make sure that you can be able and keeping yourself safe. Tomorrow's topic is advocating for yourself, making sure that you help other people to understand this and helping them out in a positive way. So we're gonna talk about going big. I think you guys have um, heard the news on Wednesday. I actually have the local news crew coming in and we're gonna be talking about Celiac Awareness Month for a piece that will be aired uh, sometime in May, so before the end of the month. So I'm guessing sometime next week and I will let you guys know when that is. But um, advocating go big and figure out how to help other people so, thank you guys so much for tuning in I appreciate it if you find this helpful please share it with others if there's a topic you want me to discuss that I haven't yet discussed please post it in the comments we're getting towards the end today's the 20th we've got 11 days left in the month I want to make sure to cover the topics that you have interest in and that are most meaningful to you thank you guys for tuning in have an amazing rest of your day and get out there and be active take care